costume construction, video number three on dye. Um, this is the section I like to call resist and um, block printing. So we're gonna talk about some examples of those. Um, this is an example, again, it's, we're working on silk here, right? Um, literally I've used a product called Gouda, which is a, re a resist. Um, it's almost like a liquid glue type product that you can draw onto your fabric. And you see where I've drawn, right, when I dip this and dyed the whole thing, the parts that had Gouda on them did not dye, okay? And then you have to go in and like kind of scrub it out. But you can see you can make patterns, right, with Gouda, um, which is really cool. You can also, this is an example of silk painting. And in this case, the Gouda is used to create like the shape of the leaves and the pears. And then once I'd created all of those shapes, this is actually painted with uh, the, pro the silk dye that we talked about. The thing about painting with the silk dye, um, a couple of things. One, <clears throat> the fabric has to be suspended on a frame. You have to tie it or clamp it into a frame. It can't be laying flat on the table. Um, the other thing is it has to be set with like steam heat. And so to set these, um, you have to roll them in paper and put them in some sort of contraption where it gets steam, but yet it never touches itself. Um, so it will actually set the die that way. But you can see we use the Gouda to draw the shapes and then use the silk dye in a paintbrush to um, like alcohol-based paints, right? To fill in the shapes. So, um, this is another uh, example of a resist dye. This is Batik, um, and many of you may have heard of it before. This is actually done using wax. And so hot wax is applied to the fabric in um, the areas where you don't want a dye to go. So in this case, um, this was done in, in multiple steps, right? So um, one layer would have been done to keep things from being white, and then it would have been dyed tan, and then another layer would be done to hold the tan, and then the whole thing would have been dyed orange. And the thing about batik that is sort of notable is, is this crackle finish that happens, and those are literally just cracks in the wax, and the dye seeping down through those cracks into, uh, into the fabric. So that's batik. Um, batik is very challenging to get the wax out of the fabric once you get it in there. You can boil it and skim it off the top of the boiling water. Um, you can try to uh, press it out like onto, you know, paper. Um, don't take it to dry cleaners. They will not be happy with you. Um, and then here's some examples of stamping. Um, I thought this is kind of fun. <laughs> this is... Um, a thing I did for like a Macbeth type design. You can see I used a rubber snake as my stamp and I um, painted thickened bleach onto the bottom of it and then used it to stamp out snake patterns on the fabric. So to do a um, stamp, you don't actually have to have a stamp. You just have to have something that you can push onto the fabric. Again, this is uh, like a heavier cotton um, if I were to put this bleach onto a silk, it would eat my fabric, so that's not good. Um, and you can see again with this, the variety in like where I've used, uh, left it longer. Um, you can see it's, it's lighter, it's lifted more color versus the ones that were left just for a minute and lifted, um, and those don't have as much color. You know, I think one of the things about dye that is so important is the serendipity of it. Um, what comes out may not be what your intention was when you start it, um, and that is life, right? And so if we can embrace that, um, then often the things that come out uh, are just really cool surprises, but you have to let go a little bit of the control to make those things happen. Um, and the last thing I want to show you, this is an example of block printing. This example, um, you know, people talk about this being uh, from India. This piece is, is actually from Pakistan. Um, and if you ever want to hear about my trip to Pakistan, I'm always happy to tell you about it. Um, again, rolling with the punches. I showed up at the airport and there was no one there to pick me up. So, uh, but this is done with a series of blocks. So this fabric is laid out on a big table, like not unlike our cutting tables, right? 
Um, so the fabric gets laid out. And then there are a series of blocks that um, do the different parts of it. So there's one that will do the pink, there's one that does the red outline, there's one that does the red fill. And the artists um, very quickly and very skillfully will take those stamps and stamp and move along. You can see here on this pink stripe, you can see right here where there's a line and then here where there's a line, you can see where the repeat is in that stamp. And then this is all done with a stamp as well. Okay, so um, there's a lot of cool techniques you can do. Um, you can make a lot of really beautiful things. Um, and this is an art form unto itself. So we've looked at some examples. Now it's time to do your dye project.